Hi, I'm Diane Gasparro. I've been with Circulus for 14 years in the cloud technology and finance space. As you can see in the agenda, we'll be moving quickly through these topics to comply with the 30 minute session. And I'll be starting with just one minute on who Circulus is. Uh, our parent company, XT Global, was established in 1998. We have three state-of-the-art facilities in India and our headquarters is in Dallas. We have approximately 500 employees and 150 in the US. We have three business divisions. We have IT services, we have technology development centers, and we have BPO facilities. And we combine the BPO and the technology centers for hybrid solutions for our clients. We invest heavily in our partnerships and our certifications and our client relationships. And we've won multiple awards over the years. And that's because we're good at what we do and we deliver what we promise. So, as I mentioned, we do have three state-of-the-art facilities. Our corporate offices are in Dallas, Texas. And as we move forward into the session, I just want to add that we didn't originally plan for virtual conferences. So, I've added some point-related cartoons to break up the monotony of the PowerPoint fatigue. We'll see if that works for you. So, let's start with best practices with technology for a successful work-from-anywhere model. I love this slide because so many companies I work with say they feel like their solutions are from the Stone Age. And you know, technology changes quickly. Keeping up with new technology options can make a difference in your company and the efficiency levels. And one of the best technologies, technologies for a successful work from anywhere business model is a cloud solution. So let's talk about cloud solutions. Circulus has been a pioneer of cloud solutions since 2006. Uh, they offer greater visibility and access to documents and processes anywhere there's internet access, which of course goes back to the topic, best practices for work from anywhere technology. And 74% of CFOs agree that cloud has had the largest impact on their business since 2017. Uh, it was even estimated that 83% of enterprise workloads will be cloud by 2020. And as I speak to helpful cloud functionality for that work from anywhere model, in the next five minutes, I'll be utilizing screenshots from Circulus to help you visualize uh, the functionality. So dashboards, with employees scattered, how great to provide management with a clear view of not only their team's workload, but how timely they perform their tasks. I mean, document volumes, team performances, KPIs, escalations, et cetera. Secure role-based access. While cloud technology provides better visibility to all, take time to analyze users' needs and roles to take advantage of the robust business rules cloud technology now offers to provide for restricted search, uh, restricted actions and privileges at a user level versus the simple older shared drives. Vendor invoice submission from anywhere. Um, provide multiple options for vendors or your employees to submit invoices into your solution. I mean, of course there's EDI, but the ability to have emails go directly into the solution for touchless processing, uh, utilize web-based scanning software capabilities, copiers that have email capabilities. I mean, even cell phones can take a picture of an invoice and email it directly in, and everybody has a smartphone these days. Uh, decentralized to centralized, if you haven't already done that, cloud technology makes that easier to move from many locations to one, and it provides significant impact on lowering overhead costs and increasing corporate controls. And then there's ad hoc spend. Take advantage of online web forms to automate payment requests of any kind, utilizing business rules you know, for the mandatory fields and workflows that manual processes are often missing. Uh, mobile apps, I think that goes without saying that that is a great technology for work from anywhere. Robust search capabilities. Um, being able to search on the fly by any combination of your information on your invoices is powerful. And with the cloud solution and working remote, your outstanding liabilities are even clear now because even if these invoices are not in your ERP yet, they might be waiting for approval or exception status, but in your cloud solution, that spend is accessible and reportable. So you have a really clear visibility to your outstanding liabilities 
from anywhere you're working. Communication tools, again, many times employees aren't working side by side anymore. So having the ability to document com conversations and communication with audit trails and automatic escalations, it can save a ton of time and prevent uh, miscommunication issues. And in regards with process automation uh, via intelligent automation and business rules, you know, whenever you can, wherever you can, and I'm gonna show you some examples. The first example we'll go with is touchless PL matching, and this is a real wow factor. Um, for solutions that provide 99% accuracy for line item detail, by implementing business rules that mirror your ERP tolerances, your PO invoices can literally come into your solution, automatically match by line items, and if all is correct, it'll load directly in your ERP and stage it for payment. It's touchless. Automatic exception categorization and routing. So, you know, touchless processing is utopia, but when there are issues, take away the human touch here as well. Have your business rules not only categorize your issues here, but also automate the routing of those issues so that it go to the appropriate user to fix. And then you can automate your document workflow for other documents that are not exception handling. If you combine the data extracted from different fields on the invoice, like the ship to, the bill to, the company name, if you happen to have multiple companies, or even the person in the attention field. If you combine those invoice fields with back and table lookups, you can also automate the very first step of the non-exception workflow documents as well. I mean, this one's pretty obvious. Automate your approval workflow. Uh, whether you prefer parallel or stair step, utilize business rules to mirror your corporate policy so that it automatically routes the chain of command or approvals. That said, you might want to utilize templates for one-offs because most companies have exceptions to the rule. I mean, there's always a situation where there's an exception to the rule. So if you use templates, you can address those automatically. Uh, for example, maybe all of your invoices need to go through the approval process except utilities. So you can create a template for that. Or maybe all legal invoices go to Sally except for one vendor, legal and regal, and those are confidential and go to Susie. So you can utilize templates to automate situations where a process is an exception to the rule. Automate your GL coding segments. There's multiple ways to automate GL coding. Uh, you can use uh, the vendor master, you can use templates, uh, and even the information like I just mentioned from the invoice itself. If you use bill to and ship to with back end table lookups, uh, by utilizing those business rules, you can automatically populate some of your GL segments and reduce the labor intensive process and it'll be more consistent. And then uh, the last area I'll address is utilizing the vendor master. If you can populate fields from your vendor master, you can increase combination reporting capabilities. Um, for example, if you populate from the vendor master vendor payment terms, then the system when it extracts the invoice date and the invoice total, you can calculate and populate discount due date, discount amount for visibility and reporting purposes. And now let's go to the second section, leveraging automation and outsourcing for a strategic advantage. Um, one thing I think all companies I've worked with have in common uh, is depicted in these cartoons. They never have enough money or enough time. So I just crack up, you know, this part of the budget we'd like to call money we wish we had. And uh, so you feel you're being pulled in different directions, stretched too thin, run too tightly. Everybody I work with seems to have more to do in a day than there's time to do it in. So I thought these were pretty funny. Anyway, so one of the things most of my clients have done over the years is not only use our automation capabilities, but have added outsourcing services as well. Outsourcing certain tasks and lower operational costs significantly and give you more bandwidth. And really anything, if you can look at it and say, well, if I had good documentation and knowledge transfer, this could be done on someone else. And some of the areas we've helped companies with do apply to the AP department, like geo coding or statement reconciliation, um, vendor master cleanup, tracking, missing invoices. But other outsourcing opportunities can be found in any department. It could be exception handling, uh, data validation, data entry. 
So you want to maybe uh, keep in mind leveraging your automation and outsourcing to give you some strategic advantages. And we'll move on now to client tips for successful cloud automation implementations. And Circulus has implemented solutions for multiple doc types, but AP is one of the most complex and difficult to automate successfully. So if automating AP isn't your core business, and if you guys aren't rocket scientists in regards to AP automation, and you've ever hit a bump with that endeavor, I thought you might find this uh, cartoon amusing. So that said, here's some tips that our clients have offered. All right, recognize idiosyncrasies exist. When you analyze your process and prepare for automation, if you see that due to certain aspects of your industry or corporate policy, there are idiosyncrasies, don't try to put a square peg in a round hole, or you will end up having more processes being handled outside of the automated solution. And these exceptions can actually eat up the time savings your automation was designed to provide. You know, find a solution. Per the last frame of this cartoon, acknowledge that your process is actually special. Uh, one of our clients, when we started the automation, they thought that there was no way to automatically route documents the minute they came in because they had two distinct invoice types with different business rules and nothing on that invoice indicated what type it was. So the solution, we created two PO boxes, email addresses and EDI formats for the vendors and it worked automatically and beautifully. Okay, it is just because it was. As this cartoon says, just because something's always been a certain way, doesn't mean you have to move forward with that same process and just try tagging on some new whistles and bells. When you're automating, it's a good time to review why are you doing things a certain way and adopt best practices when you can. Um, several of my clients had situations where employees were creating POs after the invoices were received and also overriding all PO invoice mismatches instead of fixing the issue. Uh, the solution with automation was there's reporting capabilities on invoice dates versus PO creation dates and culprits were identified and the process was enforced and the override button for mismatches was limited to managers. So employees now required, the employees were required to either fix the PO or get the vendor to send a correct invoice. Next, involve the front line. So with AP automation, you want to do the opposite of what this cartoon depicts. Uh, AP teams work with thousands of vendors and have so much knowledge in their heads. Utilize them. Don't pretend to utilize them. And uh, with one company, corporate executives, um, after the implementation, were disappointed in the automatic PO invoice match. And it was the team, the AP frontline team, that figured out that it was due to freight tax and miscellaneous and the solution, they implemented automatic defaults uh, to incorporate freight tax and miscellaneous automatically and it increased their touch match rate to almost 90%. Define success from all business groups. So per this cartoon, the little dog perceived he was helping, but they had different ideas on what was exactly helpful was. Uh, make sure everyone's on the same page regarding automated business rules and you can save everyone some time and aggravation. We had um, an implementation where on the requirement gathering, they had, the company had had a simple shared drive previously and everybody had access to it. And when they moved to the robust cloud automation solution, the requirement gathering team said, oh, let's just keep everybody getting access to everything because it'll minimize calls into AP. Well, when the C-level team realized how easy and helpful it was to access all business critical data by everyone, uh, it was a different uh, decision. They decided secure role-based access enhancements uh, were necessary and they were quick to follow. But if they'd have involved um, making sure everybody had the same, were on the same page in the beginning, you wouldn't have had to, to go back and have your enhancements. Reportable metrics. I don't know if you ever have an issue trying to track any data elements that would be helpful to have. Uh, maybe critical, like you see in this train cartoon, but hard to get your hands around how to communicate it clearly. There are some things you can accomplish with automation that would be very difficult to achieve manually, but kind of fun to figure out. Um, 
we had a client with a large fleet of vehicles and they wanted to determine if their vehicle maintenance spend was due to driver negligence or faulty vehicles. And so a simple drop down box during the approval process provided the spend analytics for them and was very helpful. All right, you don't know what you don't know. I've seen this apply to AP automation in almost every implementation. It's not comma figuratic as this uh, graph shows, but primarily because thousands of vendors, there's just so much information in people's heads, especially if you have a seasoned AP team. But the solution's pretty simple. And most of the time you can address those things, but you just have to give yourself plenty of space between UAT and hard go live deadlines so that you have time to adjust without impacting your timeline commitments. All right, and hypotheticals. <laughs> this cartoon, um, if you're automating, if you envision a world where there's no difference between hypothetical and reality, you could face some real issues because reality trumps hypothetical. And a perfect example of this is related to having thousands of vendors. Vendors are a wild card. And there are few companies that can get away with requiring all vendors to comply with the same invoice submission format. Most companies see a combination of, you know, EDI, email, paper, PDF, a Word document, Excel, even some handwritten. So be prepared to have options for the reality to process those automatically. And last but not least, it's just a funny cartoon and it speaks for itself as well. Document, document, document. This um, is meant to be helpful for the champions of automation projects. And that way you don't have to worry about all the he said, she said, you never told me. And you wait, you told me you wanted it that way. Document everything. Okay, we're gonna go to extending cloud automation beyond AP documents. And um, in doing that, you might be thinking outside the box. Don't go too far outside the box. As this cartoon depicts, if you're too far outside the box, it might escape the boundaries of reality, but we're not gonna do that. Um, as I mentioned earlier, AP automation is definitely one of the most complex to work with successfully, but I don't wanna minimize the opportunities companies have to utilize automation for other complex or, or even simple automation opportunities. I'll review a few here to get your imagination going and to see if there's any department or process in your organization that could also profit from automation. All right, a major hotel chain client of ours had issues matching POS and non-POS uh, backend data to associated images. And they had approximately a million documents a month, multiple data formats, data fields, business rules, hundreds of locations. And the process had issues with data accuracy and employee bandwidth. But by deploying our web-based scanning software at the different properties, then they easily scanned a daily batch into the data center and, and the server. And then they had data feeds coming in from the company's backend solution. So overnight, the data was extracted at 99% accuracy, business rules were applied, the backend data was married up with the imaging, bundled, bundled and exported back to the client for processing. Um, it eliminated the data quality issues, the time constraint issues, and it provided significant labor savings. Third party vendor. Okay, a lot of companies have document management solutions, but this specific implementation combines AP invoice automation with ancillary vendor contracts. Uh, previously for this company, complex contracts, SOWs, amendments, rate tables, billing details, they were all stored in different areas and in different solutions due to acquisitions and changes in corporate structure. But now in a single source solution, the client can review all of the vendor documentation associated with an invoice. And each time a new invoice is processed, all of those things, the contracts, SOWs, amendments, rate tables, billing details that are related to that invoice are automatically attached to supporting documents for easy access to critical information to approve that vendor invoice. Um, the supporting documents can also be searched separately for review as they've been you know, indexed by header fields and document types. And fleet service maintenance records management. So one of our clients eliminated two labor intensive processes at one time by providing data feed exchanges to us from both their ERP and their proprietary fleet maintenance system. So by utilizing automatic data extraction for both header and line item detail, 
at 99% accuracy, and then applying expense category logic, the invoice header information is passed to their ERP for payment, and the line item detail with the appropriate expense categories is fed daily to their fleet maintenance solution simultaneously. So, uh, and additionally, registration documents and titles are indexed and validated against the same fleet maintenance records in the daily data feed exchange. Um, this not only eliminated some redundant effort, it increased accuracy, it kept records updated instantly and consistently. So, bills of lading. High percent documents these days are no longer paper, we know that, but one exception to some industries are the bill of lading documents. Uh, for this particular logistics company, the lack of visibility to the paper bill of ladings associated with invoice was a bottleneck for multiple departments. Not only was the validation process for marrying up the bill of lading to the associated invoices labor intensive, but the controls around the manual process, it was difficult because some invoices had mandatory bill of ladings for processing, some didn't. Uh, the consistency in the process was difficult. So by automatically uploading the associated BOLs in the supporting documents tab for each of the individual invoices, along with implementing multiple complex business rules, we were able to eliminate the bottlenecks um, and we provide web-based access to all BOL images, to everybody who needed them. So the visibility to those documents minimized internal phone calls. At the same time, the end-to-end -end automation eliminated the manual labor associated with the process and provided consistency to the controls of corporate policies. Bus tickets. <laughs> the bus industry is more complex than one might think. Okay, there's many, many reasons this has stayed a paper process for so long, but too much to go into here. Uh, that said, most bus companies are regional and uh, they're successful by interlining with each other. At the end of each month, they bill each other for the legs of a customer's trip that included their vehicles. And because most of these bus companies were too small to have any level of automation, trying to get all those companies to do the same thing just proved impossible year after year. So the result was that these paper tickets were sorted and then they built complex labor intensive Excel spreadsheets. Uh, they mailed everything back and forth to prove revenue share owed in invoices. So by creating a custom image based private cloud and providing web based scanning software to each bus company, large and small, they now have the ability to scan the paper tickets and the solution automatically extracted all of the fields on the ticket. And at the end of the month, which just a few, a few clicks, the thousands of coupons uh, were filtered by bus company and creating individual e-invoices with links to each associated ticket image and electronically sends the invoice and the supporting documents to each specific bus company for audit and payment purposes. All right, last but not least, telco audit data. Data, metadata, data about data, data analytics, spend analytics. To have metadata, you first have to have the data. And sometimes getting that data into a format for analysis is labor intensive and costly. So in this situation, carriers billing each other for access fees are frequently still in paper and email. Uh, sometimes it's due to the small business carriers not having access to current technology. But whatever the reason is, the extensive details on these invoices are hard to dispute without massive fields of line item detail. So disputing that invoice data in this industry is imperative because the industry lends itself easily to fraud. And again, our private cloud solution extracts not only the invoice header information for payment, but before the invoice data is processed in the client's ERP, the large line item data sets are extracted at 99% accuracy validated with complex business rules and exported into the client's audit platform for dispute purposes, uh, or they can dispute them in our own proprietary dispute module. So let's go to our last segment, uh, utilizing offshore benefits. You know, earlier in the session, I discussed utilizing outsourcing to provide a way to lower your operational costs. So at this time, I want to introduce an additional business model for those companies that have maybe thought about having their own offshore delivery centers to lower operational costs even further. Um, this delivery model is called Bolt, and it'll give you the lower operational costs by not having to deal with the risk and complexities of owning your own offshore facility. Bolt 
stands for Build, Operate, Lease, and Transfer. We help you build your team to your requirements. Then we take all the difficult tasks off your plate in setting up an offshore operation and we operate it for you. At the same time, we transparently pass back salaries and overhead with a short-term lease agreement. And if everything works like you envision, you have the option to transfer everything over directly to your organization or continue leasing for a period of time that you can determine. So, Bolt, build, operate, lease, transfer. And the benefits are not only can you save up to 70%, you have no investment costs in facilities, infrastructure, human capital, you know, transfer pricing, local taxes, and you can focus on your core business while getting the specific talent you need for your specific industry and projects. And it's flexible, it's scalable, um, the costs are transparent and make the endeavor low risk because of the no long-term commitments. And if you love it, you can choose to transfer everything or continue leasing. And if you don't love it, you can just walk away. So, ah, phew. Uh, wrap this up. Uh, throughout this session, we've referenced different functionalities Circulus provides. But I would like to take one minute in the end with an overview of our business model, of why we believe our business model overcomes challenges. We've seen companies have an automating or companies that have tried automating and had problems automating successfully. Our business model is designed to address a few of those common challenges. Expensive, a lot of solutions out there are too expensive to provide an ROI, so our business model requires minimal cap capital expense. IT bandwidth. Most companies have a long list of projects without bandwidth to address them all. So many op automation projects get pushed out. Our business model requires minimal IT bandwidth. Accuracy. Hmm. In my 14 years, I've seen many companies automate, but many times not, they don't get the accuracy they're expecting and thus preventing the labor savings and minimizing the success of the project. Because of that, our business model guarantees 99% accuracy day one so that the champions of our projects are successful. Then there's vendor adoption. As I mentioned earlier, vendors are a wild card. And if vendor adoption does not go well and does not occur, the success of the project can be jeopardized. So our business model addresses this by allowing free access to our solution and flexible document submission options. And less flexibility constraints. In working with companies of all sizes, we find one thing in common. Whether a company is small, mid-sized, or large, they all have some level of complexity, and size does not equate to simplicity and automation needs. So we built our solution to provide robust, configurable business rules. So I've covered a lot of ground. I thank you for your time. I hope you have found something helpful to take away. I encourage you, if you have any questions, to please reach out to our virtual booth, um, and we have options there for that. And we are happy to answer any questions or set up future calls or online demos if you want additional information. And again, thank you. It's Diane Gaspero with Circulus.